Hello, everyone. Welcome back to In the Kitchen with Gracie and Amy. Today we are making um, my mom's Zia Agnese chicken. Um, although her son, Zia Agnese, or Sitzia as we called her, her son used to call it something interesting. And I'll let my mom tell you that. Um, but so my mom is going to walk me through this so I don't forget any steps. <laughs> She's gonna be the teacher as usual. So go ahead, mom. Hi, everyone. Okay, Amy. Well, wait, first tell what, what did what did uh, as a son oh, call? You want me to tell it now? Okay, yeah. all right. Um, my aunt's son uh, called this chicken uh, a, a very, uh, not unusual name, but a funny name. And I never knew that, that he thought of this chicken with this unusual name. And one time we were visiting him and he asked me to make his mother's chicken. And what he called it was, was greasy chicken. <laughs> and I said to my cousin, why are you calling a greasy chicken? And he said it was really like greasy. And I said, like greasy, like, like grease. He goes, no, it just was greasy. And, <laughs> oh, he goes, do you remember? Do you know how she made it? He goes, I don't know how she made it. I said, yeah, I know how she made it. So he's always called this chicken the greasy chicken. But Which I find hilarious. <laughs> Which I find hilarious. <laughs> Anyways, okay. So let okay, me so. tell you what you will need. Mm -hmm. uh, you will need, you're going to need chicken, of course. And mm -hmm. usually it's legs and thighs. This is what my aunt used. Mm -hmm. Onions, cut up. Um, potatoes. Garlic. Crisco and butter salt and pepper and that's what is going to go into the chicken so the first thing you're going to do is uh you're going to put your oven at 400 degrees because you want it to heat up so this is how we begin you take your roasting pan and you're going to put your chicken in it and you put the chicken in it so that you've got spaces because then you're going to have to put the potatoes and the onions in it so Place your chicken in the pan. So I got some nice, I'm gonna start with the thighs. Okay. Um, so this is, I think this is a, I believe this is a two pound value pack. So I'm going to use about half of that because I gotta make room. Right. For the, the, um, what I'm showing you probably will be for about two pounds of chicken. Yes, so I've got my, I put my thighs in the corners that way I could get the drumsticks right around. Yep. Okay. And then you get my drumsticks in there. And now make sure you leave enough room because you've got a lot of potatoes put in there and a lot of onions to put in there. And it's got to go in between the pieces. Yeah, I think, I so I, I got four, basically I got four thighs and I think four drumsticks is what fits. Okay, in. sounds good. So this is it, this isn't quite half of this package, but you can make a couple batches or. Right, you know. exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Or just use a bigger pan. Or just use a bigger pan, yes. Okay. There's only there's only my husband and I. There's only Dave and I. So I'm not making, you know, enough to feed an army. Right. Like my family holiday meal. Exactly. Yes, yes. Okay, so. Now? So now, I don't know if you guys, can you see that? Oh, that's perfect. That's okay. perfect. Okay. So now you're going to take your potatoes. Got my potatoes. I got them all cut up. I used four. Um, these are the yellow potatoes. Now I didn't peel the potatoes. 
Now, normally, normally, what my aunt did is her potatoes were always peeled. And a funny thing about what she did, we usually had these this this wonderful chicken on a holiday or when when she had a lot of company. And um, I would walk into her house and I would go into the back room after she did all her preparing. And on the table was a bowl full of, of water with her potatoes all cut and peeled. I always thought that was, I was little. So I always thought that was like so I, I was in awe of like, why are the potatoes in the water? And then as I got older, I figured it out. <laughs> so you put, so her, her potatoes were always peeled, but you can do it either way, peeled or not peeled. I, um, I like, well, there's two things. I like unpeeled potatoes, but I don't like peeling potatoes. So <laughs> that's why I left the peels on, but I bought, these these yellow ones that have a thin skin yes you can eat them you know yes. with the peels on you know if you buy something like a russet you may not want you may not want the, the peel the peel okay so i'm putting them all around yep. stuffing them in between in a between. chicken Yes, the piece. Getting them down in, down in, like, you know, right yes. next to the, yes. the bottom of the pan. Yes. Getting them all stuffed in there. Exactly. And you'll have to just keep pushing, you know. Right. Just push them down. Don't be afraid. Just get them all. Exactly. Because you want everything to get flavored. Everything to get flavored, and you want it to be nice and close and a tight knit, tightly knit in there because then it will, it will cook. And you won't have spaces and stuff. It's like it's all going to like cook together. And I'll show you the, um, I'll show everyone. Well, because I can't, well, maybe I can. There we go. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Okay. okay. So now you're going to take your onion. Okay. And you're going to cut them. Uh, they'll be cut basically the same as the potatoes in quarters. Um, we cut these. And how many pieces did you cut? Um. Each, each onion, I, I use two onions, I cut them in half, and then I cut them in four more pieces, so six right. pieces total. Right. And again, you're just pushing, pushing them down in between. You, ha you might have to break them up to get them pushed you in, though. Have, right, exactly. Because they may not fit completely. This doesn't have to be perfect. This is not like a, a perfect, you're not baking a cake or anything like that. It's really kind of a rust, very, very rustic dish. Right. And if you get, and if some of your onions go on top of mm -hmm. the chicken, that's okay too. It's not a big deal. Yeah, because it still flavors it. Exactly. You just want them to be as close, you know, to the. And the onions are going to become so soft after this thing is baked. Everything is, is going to be soft and brown and uh, and absolutely delicious when you're all, when this is all done. This was one of our this was one of our favorite meals that we had at my aunt's house. Okay. And this aunt that I had was more like my grandmother because my grandparents never came to America. And this aunt was my father's aunt. So she was our great aunt. And we were there all the time at her house. And we, I mean, and me and my sister are always at her house too. So we all kind of grew up there. My children are yeah. very, very lucky to have had the opportunity to know my aunt. Very yeah, aunt. I mean, to have Right, to like to know that she's a, she was a great, great aunt for me. Yes. You know, that was exactly. pretty amazing. Exactly, exactly. And she was she was the best. She gave the best hugs. <laughs> the best hugs. She she was so tiny. Sitiaza was probably only four foot something, you know. She was probably right. four foot five, maybe five, four foot six. She was so tiny and she was so, she was so tiny. 
and she was like you felt like she was just all bones but she was strong she was so pick you right up off the ground so yeah. strong okay garlic right garlic and you're gonna you cut, i used about <clears throat> six cloves of garlic and we cut them up we mashed them kind of it, 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 you mash them cut them as long as you've got you know it's not whole uh cut them up and do it the same way stick all over the uh between the uh pieces of the chicken I guess if you want it, if you really wanted garlic, I could use more, you know, if you really yeah, wanted it garlic. If you're a garlic lover, by all means, go use more, but that's We're just trying it. to give you the mild version. <laughs> so you're not like overpowered. Because some people, you know, they like garlic, but they don't want to right. smell like the garlic. If you don't want to put garlic, you don't have to. It's not absolutely necessary if you don't like garlic. Okay, so can you see all that? Oh, that is beautiful. Okay, so. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to get the grease. And the grease consists of butter and Crisco. And you're so, going to use four ounces of butter and four ounces of Crisco. And so I asked my mom before we started if we needed to have it um, soft. And she said, no, you want it to be cold. You want it to be cold because you're sticking pieces in there and you can't really stick softened pieces in between all of the legs and the thighs of the chicken. So this, this is my absolute favorite butter, just so you know. It's Irish butter. I love, I know the Italian using Irish butter, but I love this butter. I love because it's, it seems to be so much more flavorful than the other butter. This butter is just incredible. So anyways, it, it comes in an eight ounce um, container. So you kind of have to eyeball what a half, you know, what the four ounces are. Or you can go measure it if you, you know, are so inclined, you put it on a scale. I kind of just eyeball everything. Okay. I'll cut it so, into eight pieces. Well, I want to cut them into, because I want smaller pieces, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, so I thought we, I would cut it into like yes. fours here, because it's a big chunk. Right. And then I would cut it into fours again to give me like a little bit smaller. Yes. So that I can get it all over the chicken. Yep. And then again, stick it all in between all the pieces of the potatoes, the onions, the chicken, the garlic. Okay. Okay. I'll, you know, everywhere you can find a spot. Yep. Now I I had uh, in my uh, times of working at our church as a volunteer, we had several people who were caterers, and I remember that these caterers used to make a chicken similar to this. And uh, they would uh, have in big, huge pans of um, when they were serving at the church. And it looked familiar. I don't remember them putting all of the potatoes and the onions in there, uh, a few. Uh, but my aunt always kind of overcrowded the thing just because number one a lot of people and number two for the flavor so now comes the crisco i usually just, just you know cut it in half and then because you know they have the handy dandy chart on the side that can tell you how to cut it in half now this is the funny thing um of course at the time i was only probably i don't know maybe seven eight or nine years old uh, and she, my aunt used, of course, they had cans. We didn't have these sticks, okay? <laughs> Anyways, and so when you went in, um, into the back room, uh, if you came in early, you had, a, you had everything was on the, on, the, on the table all ready to, to assemble. But if you came in later, it was all assembled. And she'd have the butter all on top, okay, in between. And then you would see these mounds of Crisco. <laughs> and you're like mounds of Crisco, okay. <laughs> you 
you literally, you have, excuse me, you have no idea. You don't know why, <laughs> when, where, whatever. That's funny. Mounds, mounds of Crisco. She would just whack. And, and why she used Crisco, I have been racking my brains to think of why did she use Crisco? And the only thing I could come up with, well, I have two, two theories. One theory is she could have gotten a recipe, which I just don't think she would have. The second theory is in Italy, at the time when she was there, they used lard. So I would imagine that because she, she came over to America at a very, uh, at an older age. I would imagine that she cooked a lot when she was growing up. So my theory is that she didn't have lard available to her. So she had Crisco and, and used the Crisco. Now I can't be positive. I'm just surmising that she, I never asked you the question. Why are you using Crisco? I have no idea. <laughs> well, as my mom and I discovered as I was researching Crisco and lard, Crisco was made as an alternative to lard, a vegetable oil based alternative to lard. So, it was supposed to be healthier. <laughs> so I'm assuming that's why she did that. Now, before you put that cover on it, you have to salt and pepper. Oh, that's right. Thank you. See? Not as much salt as pepper. This that's is why she's here teaching me and reminding me because I would have forgotten. So when you do the salt, I don't know, just shake it all over. Okay? Yes. Because you could always add salt. You can't take it out. Um, so just shake it all over. Okay? Because like I said, when you're eating, you can put more salt on the on the chicken. The pepper, on the other hand, I remember when the dish came out of the oven and she put it on the table, there was so much pepper on each piece of chicken, I'm, and, but, it, but it was tasty, it wasn't hot, but there was a lot of pepper on the chicken. So she used a lot more pepper than she did salt. Okay, so I'm actually gonna be able, I think I can just hold this up okay. and you can see. Beautiful. That looks wonderful. And now you cover it up. So this is going to be placed in the oven for about, well, I always cook my chicken a total hour uh, and you put it in the oven for about an hour and then you're going to uncover the chicken and you're going to let it go for another half an hour, approximately another half an hour, depending on how your stove uh, is, how hot it gets at this because all stoves are different. Um, and you're going to uncover it after the hour. After the hour, you're going to check. You're going to put a fork into the chicken, and you're going to make sure that it that it's no that juices run clear. And then you're going to uh, take the paper. Well, you take the paper off, and you leave it in the oven, and you let it go for at least, like I said, according to your the way your oven runs, a half an hour to get nice and brown. And golden brown, not just golden, but golden brown. And your potatoes will have edges. The edges will be uh, brown and they'll be crunchy on the outside and creamy on the inside. And your onions will be very soft, really soft. So you can just cut it with a fork and you can eat the onion. So um, I know that you and I had talked about coming back on after an hour and a half, but I was thinking it's, I don't want to be able to, I can't hold the pan up because it's going to be so hot. So I think we'll just take a picture of the finished product and post that with the video. I think that would be a better idea than us coming back on since I won't really be able to, it's going to be hard for me to show you 
what it looks like. Um, so I think we'll just do that instead of coming back on. Does that make sense, Mom? Sure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Just so it, I mean, because we're we're not going to sit here for an hour and a half and chit chat. I mean, that, you'll get bored of us after a while. <laughs> right. Exactly. You'll be like, uh, no. <laughs> so and I think it's just going to be easier overall just for me to take a picture of the final product and post that, just like we did with the apple cone, the Pizzelli apple yeah. cone. Yes. taking a picture you know and showing you what it looked like um we'll do that with the chicken too and that way you can see but really the 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 process is more important i mean I, of course the finished product is important but the process is what you really want to know and see of how we how we have them cut up and placed them in um because the description my mom said is exactly what it is you're going to get really really nice crispy chicken and you're going to get really really nice crispy potatoes and soft onions and then the potatoes will be nice and you know creamy inside so really that's what you're going for so and also now as amy is explaining that when you when you do after the uh half of the extra half an hour okay check to make sure that the potatoes mm. are brown on the edge uh, golden and and you put a fork through and yeah. you'll tell that they're done because if yeah if you just take it out yeah <laughs> you're gonna have a potato that's not done like i said your stove is your king so to speak okay? right so you really don't know until you start poking and and after you you put and if they're if the if one or two are done then you know the whole thing is done and the same thing with your chicken because you want that chicken to be completely done and tender you poke it and you can feel that it's not raw okay so it could take, it could take up to two hours depending on your stove so i'm gonna plug pampered chef this is she just gave me an idea my digital thermometer is really really cool because it's got this awesome probe on the back and you can also if you're cooking something it's in here somewhere um they it came with the uh attachment attachment probe you can actually put it on the uh, it's got a magnet on the back you can put it on the stove and you can have the probe go internally um, and you could keep checking on the temperature or something. It's like, say you're doing a turkey and you wanted to keep checking if it's getting done, you can do that too. But I love this because you just push it in and it's digital. It's awesome. And it never, um, we have had those thermometers that have the glass top. My husband and I have had several of them over the years. No. They break. Yeah. The glass top breaks. Right. So this was actually a pretty cool purchase on my part to get the um, digital. And I mean, this was, I just love this one. This is awesome. So, oh, and, and it, it also is a bottle, bottle opener. <laughs> pretty funny. But anyway, so yeah, you definitely want to make sure your chicken's done. You don't want, don't want salmonella poisoning. Nope. Yes. Yeah, so make sure that everything is brown, golden brown. Uh, uh, soft, the, the uh, potatoes will be soft on the inside, and your onions will be nice and soft. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's when you will know that everything is uh, ready to serve. This usually tells what the, I think it's, I think it's 165, right? I, I'm not sure. You'd have to probably look it up. I'm not positive of what what temperature the chicken should come to. I don't know. It usually tells on the package, but this one, this particular one doesn't have stuff. You'll have to look it up temperature wise. So that's our show yeah. for today. We hope you enjoyed it and we hope you will enjoy Sitsi Agnaza's roasted chicken or yeah. as we call it, greasy chicken. <laughs> Arrivederci. Have a wonderful day. Until next time. Buon appetito.